His Excellency Ambassador Volkan Boskir, who has a very impressive diplomatic career starting uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Turkey, holding several positions as an ambassador, one of them to Romania actually. Uh, also going further to the European Union, representing Turkey to the European Union. And the latest and the most uh, impressive one, given the specific timing, is the one held since uh, September 2020 to September 2021, when you chaired the um, General Assembly of the United Nations. And why I say it's uh, the most recent and the most um, important for this specific interview is the fact that you uh, were the president of the General Assembly at a time when the United Nations was very much contested. Um, during the pandemic, actually, a few months after the pandemic was officially declared. And many voices uh, started criticizing the United Nations, saying that they didn't do enough and they're not doing enough at the moment. So my question to you is that, given that we're now in Baku discussing the post-pandemic order, how do you see the post-pandemic United Nations? Well, I think the, it was, first of all, an honor uh, to be the president uh, of the United Nations General Assembly uh, on the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, but in the worst uh, situation ever. Uh, the world has never lived uh, such a disaster, uh, faced a lot of difficulties, but this was exceptionally unique. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, the, 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 from the beginning of the 75th session, uh, I also felt the uh, same criticism where, because of my contacts with the, the people, the countries in my campaign, uh, talking almost with every country. The expectation was to see the United Nations uh, effective, efficient and uh, in person everywhere. So uh, as soon as I took over I said uh, we have 200,000 people around the world. They are risking their lives uh, to give education, to give, uh, to help people sick or uh, in peace uh, and stability uh, areas. And we don't have the luxury in New York uh, to stay at home and uh, handle things virtually. And uh, one of my predecessors the, from, from Sweden, when we were talking, he said, the UN needs brave people. And I used this logo, the, the expectation of the world, uh, our duty to uh, also uh, give back to the, those people around the world, but also we, we have to be brave. So uh, we started and I think the United Nations uh, has uh, 68 platforms and the General Assembly was the only platform which uh, convened in person. Security Council just recently in May uh, started. Uh, what, the, what, the, what this means is actually uh, when you're representing 193 countries, those countries must see that they are represented. If it is virtual, you can do it from the country. Yes, yeah. You don't have to come uh, to New York or uh, yeah. do it in, in, in the person. General Assembly. So that really changed a lot. And uh, we had uh, the special session on COVID, where uh, for the first time during the COVID period, we used the screens of the United Nations General Assembly Hall uh, to connect uh, live with people around the world, scientists, economists, politicians, transport uh, sector, Congress. whatever. And so in a way they were with us and we were with them. Uh, and I think there we saw that the, uh, this vaccine will be uh, found and be introduced. It was absolutely clear at that time that there would be a problem with the distribution. And it happened exactly the same. So we, I, I started a campaign, Vaccine for All, and uh, it was mainly saying that uh, vaccines must be distributed equitably, fair, and to all the regions in the world. Because if we can't solve this pandemic, we can't look to other difficulties uh, we are, we, we're facing, we will face. This is blocking every move 
uh, we have. Uh, but still, uh, the figures are very frightening. 20% uh, of the world population, mostly the rich part of the world, has 80% uh, of the vaccines and 20%, 80% doesn't have, some of them it doesn't have even vaccine. I, I, I was completely against individual countries doing this on behalf of the multilateral world. Uh, because <coughs> if one country uh, starts distributing it, then it will become a political commodity. One, uh, they will say, I like this country, I will give as much as possible. I don't like this country, I won't give any. And then, uh, I'm giving you vaccines, uh, what will you give back? Uh, I openly uh, challenged this and I said, uh, we must do it properly. Uh, it must be the COVAX facility or uh, we must bring back World Health Organization to uh, where it should be. Because I don't think World Health Organization uh, performed as, uh, uh, the way it should. It's not the fault perhaps of the organization, but because of the uh, reasons the we know. But uh, if we, and we don't have the luxury to eliminate the World, World Health Organization, but it, it has a great role to play. Not only the distribution of vaccines, but we must look at the World Health Organization to uh, understand which vaccine is appropriate or not. It, this uh, decision must not be politicized either. Yeah. If one country, because it is produced in a country that country doesn't like, and if the vaccine is uh, proper, it shouldn't be, because of political reason, banned or not, uh, not uh, considered to be Cecil. used. So it must be the uh, World Health Organization. So the, the COVID situation is, I think, uh, going to be the litmus test for, for the world we are living. And I think in that respect, United Nations has uh, a role to play. <coughs> what else is, of course, uh, you, there are three, or three organs. One is the General Assembly, one is the Security Council, and the other is the Secretary General. Secretary General is, is the manager of the operation, but the owner is the General Assembly. Security Council comes out from the General Assembly. So it is the most uh, democratic platform where 193 countries are represented. So I think the, uh, this must be used. Uh, we must create the, uh, the political wind which could affect uh, negative things not to happen, positive th things to happen. Uh, we tested this um, sometimes when the Security Council was blocked. We moved it to the General Assembly, like uh, the, the meeting for Palestine, the meeting for Myanmar, meeting for Syria, meeting for refugees, meeting for corruption, and also a special session for vaccines, and it, it gave results. And the political wind forced the Security Council, which was blocked, they couldn't even issue a press statement. Uh, ceasefires were reached, uh, military regimes were threatened, resolutions came out, and uh, we saw many things. So I think this balance is important. What I say is, the, in this balance, Security Council is stable. What the moving is, General Assembly. So if General Assembly is strong, it will look to the Security Council from a higher level. If it is weak, then the Security Council will look. So we must uh, really uh, do this. Otherwise, if we think that the General Assembly is only a, a platform where leaders come every September, make statements uh, which is all uh, mostly to their domestic consumption, and also deal with uh, uh, strategic development goals or, or f food business or uh, uh, energy, I mean, these kind of uh, social and economic issues, then uh, the political issues will never come to the General Assembly. But the problem of the United Nations is not the first part. I mean, they're doing a wonderful job for, on education, on Healthcare, 
uh, reaching people, water, oceans, uh, climate, humanitarian aid, uh, many things, middle income countries, least developed countries, helping them, uh, bringing their messages. But uh, uh, why the uh, United Nations criticized, as you have mentioned, is not because of the first part, no. but because of the political no. part. When there are crises, uh, people are dying, there are wars, uh, stability is in danger, uh, United Nations is not delivering. And success is the key of everything for a sports person, a business person, uh, diplomat, uh, politician, whatever, if you have, uh, don't have success, then you lose uh, your platform. So, United Nations needs success. And success not only in the fields uh, of uh, social and economic uh, needs, but in politi politics as well. So, uh, in, in the platform, uh, I was a speaker in this uh, global Baku Forum. I mentioned that the uh, United Nations must also be there before the problem occurs. It, it always comes after, mm -hmm. with humanitarian aid, with whatever, let's say, money, etc. But uh, it must uh, create and increase the capacities uh, for a preventive role in crisis situations. Uh, there are many methods to do this. You don't always need uh, military power. You can do it with soft power, with uh, already established uh, people who, uh, who, are, who are there already, and many other ways. But I think this will be the change uh, most needed uh, for the future of the United Nations. Thank you. So this is one of the lessons that the United Nations still has to, to learn in the immediate future in order to cope with future crisis yeah. because uh, the pronostic is uh, rather pessimistic That's that future true. pandemics will strike and crisis along. That's true. And keeping that line, it appears, given that some of the countries of the world are dealing with the fourth wave and we're dealing with new variants of the virus and mutations, and I heard someone in a conference saying what doesn't kill you in the first place, mutates and tries again. This is what's happening with COVID. It appears that the world, and since you mentioned uh, the United Nations, has not yet learned all the lessons yeah. that it should. Which would be these lessons that still need to be learned, apart from reaching out in advance and having a preventive capacity? Well, it's again what I mentioned previously. If, uh, if the United Nations is uh, strengthened and ready to perform, if it, if it can overcome the internal uh, imbalances, uh, we can talk about solutions. But uh, under these circumstances, if uh, you create a vacuum uh, because of the uh, lack of uh, uh, power the General Assembly has, then the Security Council, I mean, COVID is an issue of the General Assembly. But during the time when uh, <coughs> General Assembly couldn't meet in person, uh, Security Council was taking over uh, this, yes. uh, this issue. Then we came, <coughs> started meeting in person, and I said, look, this is our business, uh, so we do it. And, uh, we will give you... Uh, 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 the methods, uh, how we can do it together. So that was a very good example. <coughs> uh, dealing with uh, Syrian refugees or Rohingya refugees uh, <coughs> uh, has political parts, but uh, mainly it has to be dealt in the General Assembly. So uh, the reform of the United Nations is important, but we must be realistic. Uh, reforming the Security Council uh, the end game is no. Whatever you do, if it is not liked by one of the five veto powers, it will be vetoed. So that, if you start with that uh, known end game, then uh, the, the work you're doing uh, will be, become worthless. It's a very dynamic process going on, <clears throat> but the countries 
I have not yet uh, made up their mind. There is a fast track group of countries who want to become member with a veto power. Others say, slow down. Some countries don't even like the car yeah, to move. Good. Some countries don't like to have the key of the engine of the car. Some countries don't even want uh, the car having an engine. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, different, uh, different uh, approaches. African group has a uh, different approach. Uh, so uh, the important thing is bringing us back again to what I said before. We must strengthen the General Assembly. Uh, and uh, that is a more realistic reform of the system. But it will need countries uh, to believe in this. Because if you bring something, uh, I mean, member countries control uh, the decisions. You can't initiate anything unless member countries don't uh, agree to it. So it must come from the member countries to the President of the General Assembly. And if the President of the General Assembly is ready to uh, do this, it will work. But if the President starts something and the member countries are not very much interested, it doesn't work. So it must uh, the member countries uh, must feel that they can do something and come together, present resolutions, uh, force a vote there, create this necessary atmosphere. Then it might be, uh, it, must, it might create a balance between the two organs. Secretary General will obey what the Security Council and the General Assembly instructs. So it will take a lot of hard work, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It can, you know, in politics, uh, even one week is very long. Five years is uh, too short. You, but I mean, if you find the necessary uh, climate for a political decision, uh, it will happen. The matter is uh, 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 UN member countries are listening to the demand of the people of the world. And it will reach the United Nations. Otherwise, uh, we have to continue like this. Hoping, at least. <laughs>